for this reason, I don't need a DOJ memo to tell me that you can use lethal force to repel an imminent threat. I, I didn't need them to tell me that. Police officers shoot folks all the time. Private citizens shoot folks who are invading their homes all the time. In fact, non-citizens can shoot a United States citizen without having to go to a judge beforehand. Now, there is review afterward, both criminal and civil, but I didn't, I didn't need the Department of Justice, Mr. Chairman, to, to tell me that. I also did not need the Department of Justice in a memo to explain to me that in times of war, you don't need a judge picking your targets for you. And in a time of war, you can't have a judge weighing and balancing whether or not there's too much collateral damage in this building or this village. What I really want to ask the Department of Justice, Mr. Chairman, is this. There are two references in this memo where the target of a lethal operation, a U.S. citizen who may, who may have rights under the Due Process Clause in the Fourth Amendment. That's on page two, Mr. Chairman. And then on page five, the Department assumes that the rights afforded by the Fifth Amendment's Due Process Clause, as well as the Fourth Amendment, attached to a U.S. citizen even while he is abroad. So if the Fifth Amendment attaches and the Fourth Amendment attaches, does a U.S. citizen traveling abroad enjoy the full panoply of constitutional protections? And if not, why not? Whichever law professor I, I would pick the one that gave me a bad grade in con law, but he's not here. So whichever. I, I, I think I can take a crack at why the administration. Does the, do, well, no, I mean, I, here's what I want. Does the Eighth Amendment apply? So, so, so I, think, I, I think the background behind which the memo that this white paper is based on is critical to this question. I, I just, I, and, I, and I appreciate that. I just want to know, does a, does a U.S. citizen enjoy the full panoply of constitutional protections when they're traveling abroad. Because this memo said they may, or we're assuming. Does, do, does the Fourth Amendment apply? Well, so I think, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll let an actual professor of constitutional law. No, I don't care. Anybody I, who knows. Does I mean, the Fifth Amendment, you know, do, do I have to abide by Miranda? The, the, Supreme, the, the Supreme Court said in Verdugo or Quidez, it raised it's very serious, it, you know, held that this, the Fourth Amendment does not apply abroad, and there are. To non citizens. To non citizens. Um, I'm not are, talking about non citizens. Right. So, I'm talking about citizens abroad. Right. Do Congress they does. or do they not? The short answer is yes. Right. The short answer oh, is so the Eighth Amendment applies. Yes. Now the and courts, the Fifth Amendment applies. Yes, but courts and the Sixth have, Amendment applies. Courts have said, Congressman, that in that context, the rights may vary in their scope. Okay. Well, he, he, this is where I'm headed. How is the analysis different if it's a U.S. citizen that meets the department's criteria that's in Charleston, South Carolina? instead of somewhere else. So if, I, if you have the same panoply of constitutional protections overseas as here, can you use the imminent threat argument to take out an American citizen on American soil? And if not, why not? Congressman, I think, I think this goes back to a point we were, we were discussing before, which is the relevance of the feasibility of capture piece of this. And so that's the only thing we get to hang our hat on, is the feasibility from some senior level DOJ official who decides whether or not it's feasible or not to capture me. Well, as I suggested, Congressman, I think that feasibility should be reviewable after the fact. But, but that I, I think is of little consolation if you are dead. It's, is, there think, criminal, I, is there criminal review? If the government wants to bring, if the government wants to indict one of its officers for violating a criminal statute, certainly. It, so you, you think this memo would allow? Well, who would do it? Because that'd be the executive branch, right? Indeed. We have not had much success getting the executive branch to enforce laws against itself. I can just tell you in the two years I've been here, we're, we're over. Three well, or four I mean, on Congressman, that. certainly, you know, there, there is precedent. If this, if this Congress wanted to revisit, for example, the independent counsel statute, I think we could have a very interesting hearing on that front as well. But well, I, my, I'm out of time, but Mr. Chairman, I would love at some point for the Department of Justice, if we are not uh, taking too much of their time, to come and explain to us whether this analysis is equally applicable 
to American citizens on American soil. Because the feasibility of capture is little consolation to me if that is the only thing protecting us from this operation. Well, I thank the gentleman, and I would note.